So welcome to the new Aerospace Engineering Sciences building. It's 175,000 square feet dedicated exclusively to aerospace engineering. As of this year, our undergraduate to graduate ratio is right around two to one. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea about size of program, that kind of thing. Um, my class is right around 200 students um, and I'm a junior this year in um, aerospace. So um, this first floor is dedicated to um, undergraduates and the public. So down this hallway, you will see our um, largest lecture hall. It's called Aero 120 if you want to go look afterwards. Um, that is where all of our big lectures um, will take place. And then as I'll touch on later, we have smaller labs, lab groups um, and lab sessions that help bring that learning down from a big lecture hall down into more personalized um, and individual groups. Um, down this hallway, we have some of our machine shops, so we'll go see those. Um, but the subsequent floors, two, three, and four, are dedicated to specific research focus groups um, that are geared towards graduate students and PhD candidates. All right, let's head down this way. All right, so right here to the right, we have our Lockheed Martin Team Projects room. Um, it's dedicated to our senior projects class. We have an identical room upstairs um, dedicated um, or sponsored by Ball. Um, so really goes to show just how much those large corporations and companies believe in our students and are willing to put their resources towards helping our students develop. Um, to give a kind of quick overview about the curriculum in aerospace engineering, we say your first year here is really about building a solid foundation um, and you know some of the more technical things like math, um, general science, physics, that sort of thing. Sophomore year we call breadth. You cover um, all potential disciplines of aerospace engineering. CU's aerospace engineering degree um, is far more systems aerospace engineering focused. So um, I like to mention that because I know a lot of other um, aerospace engineering programs around the country um, require students to choose the air track or the space track more exclusively. Um, I like aero CU's because you don't have to do that. I still don't know which one I would choose, let alone what I have known a year ago what I would want to choose. So that's something nice about sophomore year, you get to learn about planes and rockets. Junior year we call the depth year. Um, and so then you go back in each of those classes and take a far more in-depth approach um, and learn some of the mathematics, some of the um, limitations of the base equations you learned sophomore year. Um, and then senior year is the culmination of all of that with our senior capstone course. Right, wonderful. Um, so behind us and to the side a little bit, um, this is our electronics lab. So this is designed specifically for our junior level electronics class. Um, as much as some students um, would like to push the electrical engineering side off to the electrical engineers, we that's part of the systemic or you know the system engineering side of our degree. So we really need to know. Um, because electronics play into everything, right? So we really need to have a solid understanding. So that junior level class is a really deep dive into electronics um, in this class, or this room is geared specifically towards that. Um, but this is actually so well equipped that a lot of our faculty, when they don't have some of the, um, you know, test equipment or that kind of thing that they need for their research, um, they come down here and work as well. So that's something kind of cool to see that it's not just equipped for a junior level class, it's equipped well enough to handle some of the research the faculty is doing as well. We'll head this way. Um, and I'd like to point out this room right here is our rapid prototyping room. Um, this is geared towards senior projects. Um, we have more laser cutters and 3D printers spaced throughout the building, um, but this is specifically geared towards senior projects so that they can create um, you know, quick and cheap prototypes to put in front of the client um, because you don't want to, you know, pour a bunch of money into something for the client to say, actually tweak this a tiny bit and have to go back and restart. So this is kind of something nice um, as an in-between step. <laughs> All right, so these two rooms right here are our machine shops. Um, on my left hand, your right hand side right here, this is our metal machine shop. Um, and this is actually equipped with five CNC machines. Um, so there's four spaced around the room and one 15Y Haas machine in the middle. Over here um, is our wooden composites machine shop. Um, everything you could possibly need, um, saws, drills, mills, planers, lathes, 
Um, I also like to point out in this back corner, we have a painting booth. Um, directly in front of that with the clear sheets in front of it, that's a sanding booth. We also have ovens, um, bead blasters, everything you could possibly need. Um, and each of, you know, both of these rooms have all of the necessary air circulation systems, that sort of thing to make sure our students are safe um, and breathing clean air while they do all of this. All right, so this is our pilot lab. Um, and of course we had to stick to the aerospace, um, you know, norm of things being an acronym. So pilot stands for practical innovation and learning through observing and teaching. Um, it's modeled after the ITLL or integrated teaching and learning laboratory up on main campus, if you've seen that, um, but with some specific tweaks um, that we as students really appreciate in the new building. Um, one of the most obvious ones that you'll see is these huge eight flat screen TVs around the room. That's really nice because as the professor opens up the lab or gives a mini lecture relating to the lab, we can stay at the lab stations um, and working with our groups and still be able to see the screen um, rather than all crowding around a projector um, as some of us had to do up on main campus. Um, one of the other things you'll see is in that very back corner, there's a window cut out in the wall. That's actually where um, our low speed wind tunnel is located. So um, you get to use that as early as your sophomore year. Um, and by our junior year, we were running it by ourselves. Um, so that's another thing that is really, you know, I really appreciate as a student here is, again, I can put on my resume, I know how to operate a low speed wind tunnel and I don't have to just cross my fingers that nobody asks about it. I really know how to do it. Throughout your curriculum here from freshman year to senior year, um, we accrue 61 credit hours of lab time. Um, that doesn't include the time spent in lecture learning um, the derivations, the mathematics, the methodology behind anything, that's only lab time. All right, awesome. Well, we'll head up towards the second floor now. You can either take the cardio route um, with me on the stairs or we also have an elevator right there. All right, so welcome to the second floor. Um, the second floor is dedicated to two things in specific, um, or in particular, the first thing right here is our administrative suite. Um, so that's where all of our current students, both graduate and undergraduate advisors sit. Um, so rather than having to go up to main campus to meet with your advisor, um, they have their hours here and you can ask them questions, um, have any sort of meetings that you need with them here. The second thing um, that the second floor is dedicated to um, is the Autonomous Systems Research Focus Group. Um, and so we'll actually go see one of their fabrication labs right now. All right. So this is the um, IRIS Integrated Remote and In-Situ Sensing Fabrication Lab. Um, one of their first planes actually flown about 15 years ago is this black one hanging from the ceiling right here you may be able to see. Um, their later rendition is called the Tempest, and it's the one just a little bit further back with the red body and white wings. Um, and their latest design is actually called the Raven. Um, and it's made almost exclusively out of carbon fiber um, and foam. So it's very, very light and very, very durable, easy to rebuild um, on the go during a, a mission if anything were to go wrong. Um, the other thing I like to point out in this lab um, is the Taurus program. Um, that's actually housed here as well. Um, and they're working with the National Weather Service. Um, they launched these planes that you see right here, the yellow ones along the wall. Um, they launched those off of the top of vans you may have seen outside the building um, into superstorms, supercells, um, or sometimes tornadoes if those develop. All right, sweet. We'll head up towards the third floor. So welcome to the third floor. Um, the third floor is dedicated to two different research focus groups. Um, we'll touch on each of them. So the first is actually fluid structures and materials. Um, and with fluid, fluid structures and materials, um, we have a lot of state-of-the-art research going on 
In addition to the low speed wind tunnel we um, saw in the pilot lab downstairs, we also have a larger low speed wind tunnel that has um, a full meter test section. The other side, um, our research focus group that the second floor is dedicated to um, is my personal favorite and that's bioastronautics. Um, so we split bioastronautics into two kind of areas. Um, the first being what happens when, you when we take gravity out of experiments? What happens when you, know, you try and say grow lettuce on the International Space Station? It doesn't know which way is up, it doesn't know which way is down. How do we cope with that? Um, and with that, we actually have BioServe Space Technologies is located right in this back corner in the little mission control room. And with that, when they send payloads up to the International Space Station on say, you know, a SpaceX Dragon capsule, when that gets there and the astronauts um, are scheduled to do that experiment, they will speak with the astronauts, answer any questions they may have. Um, the other side of bioastronautics is more of the human side. So what happens when we put humans into those microgravity environments? What happens to um, you know, the space habitats? Um, how do we best design those for humans to be living in and working in um, comfortably? Um, so we'll actually go see the bioastronautics high bay where a lot of that research is going on. So these are our bioastronautics bays, um, and this is where a lot of the kind of human factor side of the bioastronautics research focus group takes place. Um, you can see right here, we're nose on to uh, Sierra Nevada Corporation's Dream Chaser mock-up of their crude capsule. Um, this actually tilts to a full 90 degree launch angle. Um, it's fully equipped with all of the monitors, seats, controls, everything that you would need um, to run a full mission simulation. Um, but the rest of the bioastronautics side of research that I mentioned is the um, space habitat design. And so this also goes on in this bioastronautics high bay that we'll see on the fourth floor. Um, I have a friend that works in there. She jokes that, you know, the way she explains it to some of her family members is she's a space interior designer, um, which is a pretty good way to, to explain it, you know. But when you're in space, for example, there's no floor. So you can use the floor as storage. You can use it as experimental space. But then the question becomes, how do we best train our astronauts on the ground? Down in the bioastronautics low bay, it's tough to see from here, but um, I like to mention there's a human centrifuge that they do a lot of research into, for example, the vestibular fluids in your ear, um, how those alter are altered um, and recover when you're in low gravity environments or high G-force environments. Um, that's where they do a lot of that research as well. All right, so. Welcome to the fourth floor. Um, the fourth floor um, is dedicated again to two specific research focus groups. Um, the first is astrodynamics and satellite navigation. The second is remote sensing earth and space sciences. We have another grand challenge put on by the university that's housed on the fourth floor. That's all about pointing our satellites back towards earth and observing you know, phenomenon on the earth, um, whether that's global warming, um, polar ice cap melt, so, you know, supercells such as hurricanes, typhoons, that sort of thing. Um, as far as astrodynamics, um, satellite navigation, but if you think about it, something as small as like a little Pez can destroy your $2 billion satellite up in space, right? So you need to know where all the other Pez are, where you are relative to them, make sure you won't run into them, make sure they won't run into you. Um, so there's a lot of mathematics um, and prediction that goes into that. We'll head over here. I want you to be able to see the bioastronautics high bay um, overlook. So you can see some of the other um, space habitat design um, work that we were talking about. And then we'll head um, outside for one of arguably the best views of Boulder, in my opinion, some photo ops. So down there working with students, you can actually see Professor Jim Voss, the former astronaut, um, advising students, he's in the green shirt. Um, he's advising students on the design and build um, of that space habitat right there. Um, down closest to us, you can see the Dream Chaser model um, that tilts up to the 90 degree launch angle kind of from a higher view. Well, I will head out to the Overlook. If you would like to join me, feel free. If it's a little chilly for you, I don't blame you. It does get cold. All right, so while we're out here, I'll quickly point out um, just a few sights to see. Um, up there at the base of the flat iron, you can see the, um, you can see NCAR, they're the small red buildings. 
Um, down just a little bit further, you see the two big towers right there. Those are Williams Village, um, our off-campus first-year students' residence halls. Um, and directly to the left of those there, that's actually Bear Creek Apartments. It's university-sponsored apartments. This is the, that's the biochemistry building um, with the big stacks on top. Um, and right here is actually environmental engineering. Um, we call it SEEK. Um, and they have a cafe right there that is also um, on the meal plan if you are interested in that. Well, we will head back down to the first floor. All right. Well, that concludes the formal tour. Safe travels. Um, everybody stay healthy. Um, and let me know if you have any other questions.